Okay, so I am getting ready to close the corpus of this uh, Baroque viola. There's a few things that I do before I uh, completely glue the top on. Um, and one of the is I add this um, reinforcement paper on the ribs. Um, there are two reasons for that. Um, the first is to um, stop any cracks from spreading in the ribs because with flamed maple, what you have these, the, the tiger stripes are actually hard areas of the wood and then in between it's softer. So on every, almost on every single antique instrument, or most of the antiques, uh, antique fiddles that came through the Vienna workshop, they usually have some kind of some sort of crack somewhere on the flamed maple. So um, I'm using this uh, old paper from this old German book. It's actually one of my heroes, uh, Jean Paul Jean Paul Richter. Um, and this book was just falling apart. And I have two different uh, complete Werk Ausgabe from Jean Paul, so I can spare this. And then I also this one is also the. Um, I'm explaining all this in case you have some kind of like ethical like problem with uh, destroying a book, but you're actually not destroying it because these these little pieces of his text will actually be like a time capsule. So in 500 years, if all the Jean, Jean Paul uh, books are gone from the world, you can open up one of my uh, violas and and read Jean Paul. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, so um, I'm using like. I've already done most of it, and um, I mean, it just looks cool, you know? It looks really cool. Um, let me just get this done while the, um, while the glue's still hot. So what I do, this, I've saved the seep out for last, and you just apply like a really generous amount of glue. So that also, and then I put a strip there. And what I'm doing is I'm covering the very edge of the lining itself. So the second effect that this has is that it absolutely 100% is going to prevent you from getting any lining buzzes, you know, uh, 50 years down the road. So once I have the strip in place, then I put another generous amount of glue and smush it with my fingers like this. And it sort of becomes like paper mache. It just like, hold on a second. I will sh put this closer to the camera when it's all done. So, again, the glue, this is leftover glue from setting my neck yesterday. So it's, it's um, pretty thick. I use thick glue for this, um, for this task. Again, so it's just covering the edge of my lining, like the very edge. Hold on one second and I will show you. So smushing, whoa, smushing it in with my fingers and it, it just, it's going to, this, these, this paper, you could use this paper is actually fairly thin because I don't want to add any weight. You know what I mean? Um, so let's see if I can get the, this on camera. It's kind of hard. The light is weird. So actually, it's on top of the, just the very edge of the lining. Because what can happen if you do your line, if you do a bad job on the linings, uh, and hopefully you do not is that the lining will start to buzz inside the instrument like and we don't want that so um now i have like a towel a wet piece of scrap rag here and i'll just make sure that clean up all of this um if there's any nastiness in here right and i mean that just looks so cool <laughs> Um, so, and then the second thing I'm going to do is do the interior varnish. Now I'm going to prepare this surface for the interior varnish, but first I need to let this dry completely, right? 
Okay, so now that all of that is dry, I let it dry for about two hours. Um, I want to prepare the interior surface for varnishing. Um, and this is important. <laughs> I mean, this is just the way I do it. Um, the theory is, is that the back is a reflect, reflective surface. So <clears throat> this is especially important if you're using um, willow or poplar or a softer hardwood. And basically what you want is you want this sort of like very hard mirror-like surface. So um, before I glued, I used a scraper, which, you know, um, and that, that actually a really sharp scraper gets a very, very smooth surface. And most makers would, um, I, I think, they're just done, you know. But for me, I found that um, two things, burnishing, so the next step is you're taking 1000 grit metal sandpaper, very important. This is the, it's usually a darker color um, and you're burnishing. Just same as you would uh, ebony fingerboard. It's like you're polishing it, you know. It, there's no dust, really. So it's not, rem with 1,000, there's a tiny bit. And the reason that you're doing this is that you want, um, you really don't want it to absorb a lot of varnish. You just want this very, very hard reflective surface. So what I do is I do like, you know, 1,000, then 2,000, you know, and you will see that the um, the back starts to actually get shiny, like it's been, like it's been, um, same as a fingerboard. You know, when you're polishing your fingerboards with 5,000, the wood actually starts to get, sh you know, polished and shiny. And that's what, that's what you want. So, and also, a very rough surface is going to suck a lot of varnish, and you don't want that. Um, it, the, the varnish is going to possibly, uh, <laughs> it, it, well, it will, it can increase the resonance. It can give you more resonance. Now, I did an experiment on one viola where I just put a lot of varnish. I put almost as much as I would put, um, you know, on the outside, like 10 layers. And it ended up sounding kind of sort of metallic. It was very resonant, but it had a sort of unpleasant kind of crispiness um, to the sound. So you don't, the, that's why you're burnishing to get a really smooth reflective surface and just to absorb enough varnish that you get that extra kind of kick of resonance, but it's not metallic, you know? So, and a lot of those things depend on how you made the instrument itself, etc., etc. So, um, yeah, basically it's just an alcohol varnish. Um, do not put oil varnish on the inside. It's just, it's my suggestion. So, I mean, it's the same as varnishing anything. Um, tend to go on the thin side with interior varnishes. I start with 50-50 and I can just see how it feels on the brush on like a scrap of wood or whatnot. So it would be uh, right. And then go it butting up right to your linings. I mean, you can pretty much just kind of slop it on. <laughs> and you're not done here, I'll show you in a minute. So this. 
this has a little bit of color in it and it's gonna make a nice sort of golden color. So I'm varnishing right up to my linings, but not getting too much. You don't wanna get alcohol in, in the joint here because alcohol is similar to water, even though, um, you know, because you, uh, you could have an open seam. If you really slopped on a bunch of alcohol, it's possible that you would get an open seam here. Probably not, but just better just to be careful. All right, so you can see a lot of tool marks in here. So that's, that's basically one smooth, one even coat right there. So I'll stop, right? And what you wanna do is then, sometimes when you, when you add alcohol varnish, and this is the same for the outside, you'll notice that it feels kind of like gritty, like it causes the grain to sort of spring. So the way to fix that is to, um, to take a rag and this is pure alcohol. And again, being careful not to get too much in your seams. then it's like you're removing. You're not really removing, you're kind of burnishing, again, the surface. So what you're left with is something that is like perfectly as smooth as possible, right? So imagine that you're in um, a bathroom with tile on the walls, right? When you yell something, or when you talk, the sound reverberates back and back and forth, right? So let's say you change the surface and put a piece of carpet on the wall, right? Then you have these damping, uh, you have the carpet acts as a damping mechanism and it's not reflecting as much, right? So essentially what we're trying to do is just control the amount of sound reflection by treating the surface, the same as treating the surface of, of a wall. It's I mean, that's a crappy metaphor, but it gives you an idea. So now I still have varnish, but now it's like smooth as baby's butt. Take my word for it. There's none of that roughness. So then, basically, um, I let that dry. You can let that dry for about um, maybe an hour. And then again, with 5,000. 5,000 paper, um, once it's dry, you go again, right? And then you'll start to, you'll see the wood, it's saturated with varnish, but you've also, so you don't have any puddles, you've got this perfectly smooth reflective surface. So when the sound comes through, <clears throat> when the sound comes from the bridge, it's going to hit that back and reflect out from the sound holes, right? So that's the concept. Um, it's basically just alcohol and it's just an alcohol varnish on the inside and that's it. Nothing fancy. Um, I know the Mitt Mittenwald uh, German makers would use gl glue size on the inside to get a sort of um, you know, to seal it and to get a, re a reflective surface. But uh, for me, that makes me nervous because I'm worried about, I just don't want a lot of glue. You, you picture like woodworms just by like being on the inside and going, yum, ah, yum, yum, you know? So um, even though I can see there's a lot of glue. So that's the concept is basically bur um, scraper burnishing with not sanding you're using metal sandpaper to smooth it, then you add just one or maybe two layers of varnish, use alcohol to make it smooth again, and then burnish. And um, the resonance of your instrument will increase, I promise you. <laughs>